What's up guys, Atom Bacon here. Welcome to my third Let's Play. Need for Speed, Hot Pursuit. Hmm. Alright. <laughs> so, uh, this is actually my second time trying to record this episode. I got all the way done the I got all the way to being done the first race. Uh, before I realized that my recorder stopped for some reason. Uh it seems that when I go from the PlayStation hub screen to selecting the game, it caused my recorder to stop. So I'm keeping a very close Welcome eye, to making sure it doesn't do that again. Uh, speed, hot here it's just going to explain what the auto log is. Auto -log puts basically, the of your game, I I'll you just be quiet and let you hear it. Compare and compete with all your friends playing Need for Speed. Pictures that you take in the game will appear in photos. And you can share these with your friends by posting them to your wall. The wall is where you can comment on events and see what your friends are saying about them. You can even play events straight <coughs> from these messages. Hot Pursuit Online is where you connect and compete with up to seven other players, earning bounty towards your cop or racer careers. Head into Seacrest County to earn bounty and progress your career as either a cop or a racer in solo events. Autolog recommends is an all-new innovation in social competition. Here, Autolog recommend mm. events to you based on what your friends have been playing. Autolog will also make friend suggestions, allowing you to expand your Need for Speed friends network. Stay up to date with the latest Need for Speed information, direct from Criterion Games and Electronic Arts. Finally, extend your hot pursuit experiences with new content available in the store. To get started right away, head into the career. Yeah, um, most of the stuff I'm not really going to pay much mind to. This Let's Play is going to be focused on the career. And uh, just let we jump right the into another place cutscene. to speed. A playground for the most exotic cars and drivers in the world. But this is not a lawless place. Constant competition has led to the creation of the world's fastest police force, Seacrest County Speed Enforcement. The SCPD <coughs> spare no expense to redline it all the way and make you pay. Every day, new drivers still show up and attempt to tame Seacrest County and outrun the law. The pursuit for the ultimate drive starts here. Which side are you on? There are only two locations available. Uh, you may notice these up here. These are DLC events. I'm not really going to be worrying about those. I, I don't know if I'm going to show those at all, but even if I do, it's going to be like at the end bonus content. Probably won't know. Anyway, getting into it. Roadsters Reborn. Entering the Roadsters Reborn race event is confirmed. In this showcase event, you will unleash the true potential of the Roadster as you compete against other drivers in a race along the Seacrest County coast. Use your driving skills to outmaneuver the opposition and take a medal. Your reputation is measured in wanted levels. Currently, you are not registering much activity and are classed by the SCPD as a level one speeder. The greatest drivers win the races and outrun the law with style and are classified as level 20, most wanted. Your daily activity is measured as bounty the harder, faster, and more dangerously you drive, the more bounty you will earn. Win races, beat your rivals, and stay one step ahead of the cops to increase your wanted level and get access to new cars and entry into the toughest events. Your car is equipped with a race spec nitro system. Use this system to gain a rapid acceleration increase. Nitros will only charge if you drive dangerously. Drive in oncoming traffic lanes, near miss other vehicles, drift corners, and take shortcuts to gain the most nitros. This race has restricted entry requirements. You can choose any of the available cars to drive in the race. Some cars are locked at this time and will become available as you increase your wanted level. Any of the available any of it any of the available one car. <coughs> if you sit on the uh, car select screen like, if you select a car and then sit on, like, the paint screen, uh, you'll actually get a little spokes, 
little uh, sales pitch about the car, which is pretty cool. Some some of them actually have some interesting little notes. Uh, the one I'll, I'll show ones that I enjoy, but I won't show all of them. Uh, I apologize for my snuffling, coughing, and if my voice sounds a little different, I'm just getting over being sick. So, yeah, if if I sound a bit different, plus I'm doing a different mic style than I did with the blob. Uh, I'm using, uh, with the blob I was using my headset, <coughs> with this one I'm just using a more open mic that picks up more around it. It's certainly more comfortable for me to not be wearing a mic, uh, I'm not sure how much, uh, it's the same system I used for my Metroid Prime, let's play, I guess I should say James Metroid Prime, let's play. Now, uh, actually, before I get too far into this, I just want to go into display settings. No, no. Okay, not display settings. Uh, gameplay settings. Here we go. And I want to switch my <laughs> speedometer to metric instead of imperial because I'm Canadian. So, for any of you American viewers who are used to miles per hour, sorry, but I'm using kilometers. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, this was a game that I had considered, uh, for a while for doing, um, I, I had a hard time trying to think of how I would do it, as, as, just thinking of, like, oh, well, that was, like, how to commentate a game like this, um, because, while it certainly is a game that has a lot of constant action, it's not exactly the most conducive, because like, some games you can still commentate on what's going on, but with this one it's kind of obvious what's going on most of the time, so I'm still working on exactly how I want to commentate, how I want to commentate on this, but I, I think I'll enjoy it, because this is, really this is only my second proper Let's Play, because Metroid Prime was more Jaden's thing than mine, and I, he had more to say for that. I was more of a guest on my own channel, really. <coughs> anyway, uh, you may notice a couple of times my uh, speedometer turning red down there. That indicates something I like to call overdrive, which is when your car is driving faster than its own top speed. Um, I keep getting paranoid and looking down at my recorder to make sure it's still running. Um, anyway, uh, overdrive. As I like to call it, that's not the proper term. But overdrive is when, you're, like I said, when your car is going faster than its own top speed. Uh, this can happen for a variety of reasons. Either uh, <laughs> things such as using your nitrous on a straightaway or on a downhill, uh, slipstreaming uh, again on a straightaway or a downhill, or just anything like that. They can. Uh, just give you a little more momentum and push your car a bit faster than the car's own horsepower wants to bring it. If overdrive doesn't really have any serious effect, where the hell is it? There we go. <laughs> doesn't really have any serious effects, but it is kind of cool that the game does make note that you are driving faster than your top speed. Uh, so yeah. Um, if you're a racer, it'll be your speedometer will turn red. If you're a cop, it will turn blue. <laughs> uh. okay. This card isn't exactly the best off-roader. Uh. Generally, the lower the wheels, the worse the vehicle handles on dirt. But hey, threw me ahead of the lot, so can't really complain. <laughs> And I got one kilometer to the finish line. And I've got my way to finish the line. Well, not really. But. So, I won by a pretty considerable amount. <coughs> Speaking of winning, uh, each event you can have a bronze, silver, or gold. Or if you're a cop in the same order, uh, path, merit, or distinction. I'm not going to be super, like, anal about getting gold on every event. 
some of them are pretty tough, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna sell for a bronze or a pass from time to time. I, I I'm definitely gonna try to do the best I can on every event, but I'm not gonna get all riled up on uh, or make a big deal out of events where I only get gold, especially for uh, things like rapid response missions, which we'll get into later. Anyway, so it was explaining bounty earlier, and as you can see, I got. 8,870 from that one, which was enough to get me a new car, the Mazda RX-8. Now, this has unlocked a new event here, but I'm going to take my first cop event before moving on to more racing, because I plan to... Well, I'll finish that in a second. I like to consider interceptor missions to be like the boss fights of this game. Uh, as it's essentially you versus one significantly tougher opponent, as opposed to hot pursuit missions where you're fighting off a bunch of opponents at once. Uh, it shows their weapons, but uh, we'll get into those in a bit. It's kind of funny that just to pass, you just need to do it. As it is possible to fail this mission, even with those wind wind conditions, it is still possible to lose if you are that bad at the game. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Dude, fair. This one is pretty easy, but there are actually some interceptor missions that can be pretty tough. Uh, so, it's like, there's essentially there's two ways to lose this. You can either take so much damage that you die, or you can be separated and lose track, which is generally what tends to happen more frequently. Hey, but with this one, it doesn't take much, you just gotta close the gap and then generally one good hit is enough. Usually. Oh wow, you little bastard. I don't think I'm gonna get distinction for this. I like how on earth did I end up this far away? Like seriously. <laughs> Run. There we go. Just in the nick of time to get extinction. Fifty four point two five seconds. I've definitely done better in the past, but can't complain. I 
And, much like before, I get a new car. The Subaru Impreza. Interestingly, that actually unlocked two new police events. Preview events usually take the form of a rapid response or time trial mission, but they <laughs> allow you to use a car you're not going to unlock until quite much later in the game. And Escape to the Beach, Hot Pursuit. Uh, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do this, the Revenge and Reveal and end this episode here. Uh, or like, I'm gonna do this, and then end the episode after this mission, because that should be about a good length episode. Now, rapid responses are pretty much your cut and dry time trials, get from point A to point B in X amount of time. However, what's different about these from most, and even different from the racer time trials in the same game, you generally have more forgiving time limits, but you're penalized for hitting things. So I find they, I find that they can be a bit tougher actually, because you're penalized quite a bit harder for hitting things. Interestingly enough, a full-on crash doesn't add time penalty. I mean, the time you spend being crashed is a penalty enough. So. All units respond. This is an emergency situation. Okay, if I seriously got a penalty that quickly, that would have been hilarious. <coughs> oh yeah, these often tend to strike with a full nitrous game, or maybe it's just this one being nice. <laughs> the trick to nitrous is to find the time to use it strategically. Coming out of a drift is a great time to use it. Oh. Okay, there. So see, I hit a wall and I got two seconds. Hitting a wall will give you two seconds, hitting a car will give you three seconds. So, you want to be careful about that. With these, you definitely don't want to be too reckless, as it's better to be just a little slower and cautious, or else that kind of stuff will happen. Also, you can uh, turn off your sirens with a uh, triangle, or I guess Y if you're playing on an Xbox. Okay, well, that was just stupid. <laughs> oh, that was close. I, I do find that the uh, preview missions can actually be tougher than if the um, normal rapid response missions, as because you're given a car that is faster than what you are used to driving, you aren't used to going that fast. So... It can be a bit disorienting to have a car that's quite a bit faster and often slipperier, more slipperier, more slippery than what you're used to, because uh, generally you're given a, a sort of step up, each one a little better than the next, so to have this big jump in performance level, it can be a bit weird to get used to. And I've got the Mazda RX-8 for both of them now. And with that, I'm going to end this first episode off here. See you guys next time.